Let's talk about a tragic event that happened 50 years ago during the building of Arrowhead Stadium. Travis Kelsey being the best tight end in the NFL, regardless of what ESPN thinks. Tyreek Hill back with another couple interesting podcast snippets. Look at an interview Mitch Holtis did in which he reveals the Chiefs are going into the season with a huge chip on their shoulder and much freaking more. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, aka the Red Bearded Monopoly Man, or sometimes known as Gandalf the Red, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so go ahead and sub. If you want to get the best Chiefs coverage this upcoming season, hit that like button. If the tomahawk chop is even better, then when Derek Carr flops, especially in the playoffs when he actually makes it there. And let's get into this video starting with a couple interesting bits featuring a current Chiefs player and then a former Chiefs player. For the current, the Chiefs released a quick get to know you segment about Ronald Jones II. And here's what he shares. He's in year five of his NFL career, couldn't go a day without music. His favorite holiday is Christmas. And his biggest role model in life is his entrepreneur uncle. And then for the former Chiefs player, Apparently, quarterback Matt Moore was on set for Top Gun Maverick, giving out pointers during the football scene on the beach. And I haven't seen this movie, but that's a pretty cool little nugget right there. Ooh, I could go for some chicken nuggets from Chick-fil-A right now. And I figured anyway that some of you would like to know that about Matt Moore helping on this set because the movie's done well. And even though I haven't seen it, you guys keep saying good things about it. And I also got to let you know that green screen man from yesterday's video. Yeah, that guy, the guy who said Hardman will never amount to anything in his life. Yeah, he watched yesterday's video, left a comment, and then proceeded to change his name on Twitter to Green Screen Man. And it's still like that this morning as of when I recorded this video. And I won't lie, one, that's freaking hilarious. And I admire his sense of humor and his ability to roll with the punches because I went in on this guy. And two, I respect you for rolling with said punches a little bit, even though your video yesterday was dumb. Don't be stupid, stupid. This is not a joke, you're a joke. And then Shaggy the Historian Shane is back with another one. He sent me this yesterday and it's some awesome history, but certainly a tragic part of Arrowhead and its construction. The photos you're seeing right now were taken three weeks before Arrowhead Stadium officially opened, which was exactly 50 years ago as of yesterday. So it was July 17th, 50 years ago. And from what I could read on this newspaper article, during construction, there was a wild accident that happened resulting in one fatality and four others injured when a sound cage that they were for some reason riding on dropped, sending these men about 100 feet to the ground. It was uh, not good to say the least. Seats were splintered everywhere when this thing crashed and I believe some of the men were even trapped in between the seating and the sound cage. The caption of this photo you're seeing right now reads as follows. The crane lies twisted over the top two decks of the football stadium at the Harry S. Truman Sports Complex. In the foreground is the metal support for the sound system that fell with the men to the seating area below. So yeah, certainly a tragic thing to happen just prior to the opening of Arrowhead. And on the subject of things that are tragic, although I'll tell you right now, it's not nearly as serious as what I just talked about because Nobody died or anything crazy like that, but ESPN recently revealed their tight end rankings that were voted on by execs, coaches, scouts, and players. And for the third year in a row, Travis Kelsey somehow fails to take the number one spot in these little rankings. Despite being the best tight end in the entire NFL, they go on to say it's because Kittle is four years younger and a better overall tight end, specifically because he's a better blocker, even though Kelsey can block and it's a proven fact. But I don't really care personally about a better blocker. Why, Cole? I want a better winner. I want the tight end that is gonna help win the game when it matters. The tight end who has been consistent year in and year out. The tight end who has put up 1,000 plus yard seasons, one, two, three, four, five, six years in a row. The tight end who leads the league in receiving yards since 2016, beating out even Devontae freaking Adams. The tight end who called game in overtime against the Chargers and also against the Buffalo Bills in the divisional game. Yeah, that guy. That's who I want on the team. You guys need to help me out. What am I missing here? Am I just that biased towards Travis Kelsey that I can't see something obvious in front of my bald head, red bearded face? This is the third year in a row that this man hasn't made the top tight end spot yet has remained the best tight end in the league. I'm pretty confused about that one, not gonna lie. Make it make sense. 
And then Tyreek Hill is back in the news talking more about the Chiefs, even though he left for money, yet still seems to check his little rear view mirror for the Kansas City skyline quite often. Yeah, he had a recent podcast episode with Buffalo Bills safety Jordan Poyer, and they talked about a wide variety of things, including both times the Chiefs and the Bills played each other last season, the first being week five when the Bills won by quite a bit, and then the divisional round of the playoffs where, you know, the Chiefs won in glorious, historic fashion in overtime after that 13-second drive. You know the story. The beginning of this podcast was pure gold because of that and made me laugh. Because right after they introduced safety Jordan Poyer, Tyreek had this to say. Well, and, hey, before we get the show started, man, I just got to say this, man. 13 seconds. That's all I got to say. That's Damn, all. you brought that in say. early, bro. That's all Jeez. I got to say. You like, ain't even been here for five minutes, bro. You brought that in early. I should have introduced you like that. Mr. 13 <laughs> seconds. I mean, come on, guys. I know Tyreek isn't the most popular name in KC right now. In fact, I'm going to get comments on today's video saying, why you talk about Tyreek when he no longer a chief? But that was funny as hell. That comes down from the sky in a storm. I love that part so much that I may or may not have rewatched it 13 times. Anyway, there's a couple short snippets in this episode that's worth showing you all and talking a bit about. The first is Jordan Poyer trying to stick up for Tyreek when he brought up his dropped pass pick six in week five against the Bills. Remember that play? I, I feel like I gave Micah a free one. You did. I gave him a free one, bro. Like, you did. My, it kind of hit you in the back. And it, it's all right, though. I'm, nah, supposed it, to catch it. I'm a pro athlete. I'm supposed to catch the ball, man. He kind of threw a little behind you, though. It's, it's all right. No, it wasn't. It was right on the money. Come on, man. Don't say yeah, that on here. I'm not going to say you nothing say crazy. Here, George. It was a good, it. It was a good <laughs> ball. Don't all the Chiefs fans, here, George. it was a good one. George. Man, it was a good ball. It was a good ball. Great pass. Great it was pass. a great pass. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic either. Yeah, we know you weren't being sarcastic, Tyreek, because that ball literally hit you right where it was supposed to. Anyway, tensions were apparently high leading up to that Bills game in Week 5 based on the Chiefs' 2-2 two and two season, and Tyreek started to get into the details then changed his mind and pulled back. Like a lot of things, didn't see eye to eye in the building. And, you know, a lot of people, were, I, I just don't want to say, we're, we're going through some things, you know, so the, they beat I. And it was very, it was very embarrassing. So even though Tyreek's podcast is called It Needed to Be Said, I guess it didn't need to be said. I can only imagine what he was referring to, but I'm sure it had to do something with players coaches as well as players and coaches all getting into it with each other butting heads after such a frustrating four-week stretch Tyreek sort of confirms as much when he goes on to describe how upset Eric bien was after the loss and how bien ended up fueling the team to come back strong Eric bien like he's a he's a madman dog he like he was cussing us out all week mm -hmm. saying these mfs y'all let these mfs come in here and whoop y'all like that like Come on, man. Y'all got to have some respect on y'all name and this building this and this organization and stuff like that. And like I can I can just sense in the guys eyes and hearts and I can I just felt the energy like guys like really took that mm -hmm. and like ran with it the whole week. Mm -hmm. Like practice was perfect. No drops. Everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. You know, so we go out and, and we play, man, and we plan for each other, you know, 13 seconds to go, man, this do or die. You know, me, Pat, and Kelsey, we come up together, dog. We like, bro, we ain't going home, bro. So what I take away from this is more proof that Eric Bieniemy has an abrasive coaching style, whether it's good or it's bad. It's just who he is. Some are motivated by that style of coaching and some do not like it. And we'll later talk bad about Bieniemy. Players like Shady McCoy, for example, being one of the most recent ones. You remember that, knucklehead. So again, I do believe EB is loved within the building in KC, but I also believe that his coaching style has affected his relationship with some at times and even potentially prohibited him from landing a head coaching job. Now, to be clear, that wasn't the sole reason for why he didn't get the 13 or 14 jobs he interviewed for, but it certainly played a factor in some of them. I'm just looking to hire guys that I don't mind hanging out with for like 12 hours a day. So let's do this. You know, you guys are hired. And then Mitch Holtis sat down for an exclusive interview with KOAM News and was of course immediately asked about the Chiefs trading away Tyreek Hill, go figure, and how things will look with the Cheetah gone. Mitch talked about the floor of the receiving room now being higher, and plenty of quality players being here with Juju, MVS being the offseason additions, Sky Moore being drafted, and Mitch says he thinks McColl will also be taking a step up as well. 
man, green screen man needs to listen to Mitch. And another thing he noted that will definitely be stepping up is the running back room. He said it's better, deeper, and has more girth. Big pause, but that is exactly what he said. Mitch mentioned that the running back room has been missing a bigger, faster back since Damian Williams left, and they now have something similar in Rojo and Isaiah Pacheco, at least from what he personally saw during OTAs this offseason. He then said something very interesting that I want you to hear straight from him. I saw a lot of things this spring and summer that really encouraged me. The biggest thing, though, was this hyper-focus from Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Kelsey was incredible. And I, I went up to him and like, dude, are you, like, you're acting like you're trying to make the team. And he just said, I've refound my love for football, one, and two, we're a little bit ticked off. Like, everybody thinks we're going to be fourth and be covered in molten lava by Thanksgiving because we're going to be three and 14. These guys are going to camp on a mission. All right, so Travis Kelsey is going into his 10th season in the NFL and has refound his love for football and also has a chip on his shoulder approximately the size of an iceberg. So that is great news for the Chiefs and bad news for the rest of the league because Kelsey is about to go for 2,000 yards and 22 TDs. Okay, maybe not quite that, but definitely 1,200 yards and eight TDs at least per usual. Anyhow, Mitch then shifts his focus from the offense to the defense. When asked about Tyron Matthew and the deficit, the Honey Badger leaves behind, specifically with the leadership he brought to the team. And well, let's just say Mitch was pretty blunt and honest about his thoughts on Tyron Matthew. You know, we can lose sleep over a lot of things. Don't lose sleep over that one. Uh, Tyron struggled last year, quite honestly. And people look at the leadership factor. I, I see no backward movement there. Do not lose any sleep about Tyron not coming back, says the official voice of the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, okay then, I'll take your word for it, Mitch. He said Nick Bolton is definitely gonna be stepping up this year wearing the green dot, getting the calls. Carl Loftus and McDuffie will be immediate starters. Brian Cook will be an effective contributor. And then he gave a shout out to linebacker Elijah Lee, saying he's really gonna help this team. And because of that, Leo Chanel will contribute, yes, but won't be worked in as quickly as, say, Brian Cook will be worked into the secondary. And before shifting to talk about the AFC West overall, Mitch ended on the defense by saying they will be younger, faster, more explosive, and ultimately more impactful. He then did not seem one bit worried about the Chiefs' odds in the AFC West. The Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes, who is basically the best QB in NFL history. When you look at every metric, from the first four years of quarterback play when compared to everybody else. And then, of course, they have Andy Reid. And Mitch had a crazy stat ready for this one when talking about Big Red compared to the rest of the coaches in the AFC West. Because the rest of the division coaches in the AFC West have 20 total wins in their life. Andy Reid has 19 playoff wins. Okay, so you have all the coaches over here in the AFC West from the Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos, and their total wins as head coaches in the NFL at 20. Then you have Andy Reid over here who has 19 wins solely in the playoffs. What a little savage Mitch Holt this is, going straight for the jugular on local television and not giving one little care. To further back up why Mitch is so confident, look at this graphic. Patrick Mahomes versus the AFC West. He's 9-0 against the Broncos, 5-2 against the Chargers, and 7-1 and against the Raiders. Looking at this graphic makes it simple. Patrick Mahomes is their biological father. And it doesn't end there because as of November 28th, 2021, Andy Reid was 37-13 and 13 against the AFC West, which basically means he wins a game against the Raiders, Broncos, or Chargers 75% of the time. Absolutely incredible. And this is why Mitch is not concerned. And also why he ends this saying that anyone who counts the Chiefs out and picks them to end up last in the division does so at their own peril. So there you have it straight from the words of the voice of the Kansas City Chiefs himself. It is caught by Kelsey! Touchdown! Kansas City! From here, I want to give a couple quick shout outs. One to Leah's stand in who sent over a $10 super thanks bomb and said, Happy my Monday the 18th birthday. Get a little something with frosting courtesy of me. Well, happy freaking birthday, you legend. I hope you have a great day. And I appreciate the gesture, especially when it's your birthday and you're supposed to get gifts, not give them. I love it. And then Hoove is back with the back to back. $5 super thanks. He never really says too much, one being yep, yep, and the other being thanks, but just lets me know he's enjoying the content, which I do appreciate a ton. Thanks so much to you guys and all of y'all watching for the support. Every like, comment, all that helps a ton. Make sure to leave a bearded comment to potentially be featured in an upcoming vid. Sub for more news like this, and then check out this video here. Woo! 
which is the full four and a half or so minute interview from Mitch Holt this on the Chiefs this season. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Chiefs?